In this video, we're going to talk compact tractors. There's a lot of content out there on YouTube about new compact tractors. What we're going to do that's a little different is we're going to take a look at this 40-year-old Ford 1700 and see how it stacks up against some modern compact tractors on the market. So we'll kind of do a comparison of some of the features and aspects of this tractor versus a new tractor. And along the way, I'll give you some of what I like and some of what I don't like so much about this old machine. We'll start at the back here with the three-point hitch. This three-point hitch, if you believe specs that are out there, can lift over 3,000 pounds at the end of the arms, which is out of this world compared to modern compact tractors. I can attest, I don't know if it lifts fully that much, but I can attest to the fact that it does have a very, very substantial lift capacity because you can pick stuff up on the back where it almost feels like the front of the tractor is going to come off the ground uh, rather than it being unable to lift at the rear. Now, looking at this, this is kind of a simplistic way to set up a three-point. You've got turnbuckles down here to adjust the side-to-side -side sway. There are some nice modern systems that use pins. However, this is still the standard on basic compact tractors today. One of my favorite things about this three-point hitch, though, is for the side-to-side -side level adjustment is this crank right here. This is really smooth and slick, and even when you've got a, a load on the hitch, you can crank this to adjust the height on this arm relative to, to the other one. So this is a really nice feature that's as good or better than anything that I've seen on compact tractors today. This tractor's got your standard 540 RPM rear PTO. Other than that, the rear end here is as you would expect for any tractor. At the operator stations, where we see, start to see some differences between this older machine and a newer tractor. Starting with the seat, very, very simple pan seat. No armrests, and if we flip it up, absolutely no suspension, no springs whatsoever. So you are gonna feel the ground and sort of every bump along the way on this tractor, whereas a modern machine would at the very least have spring suspension here for the seat, and some of the nicest machines actually have an air ride seat. Looking at the controls now, very, very simple. This is a gear drive tractor. The left shift lever is for your ranges. This is, transmission has four ranges. And then in each range, there are three speeds and reverse. So you're shifting your ranges with your left shift. You're shifting your gears within a range with your right shift. Nothing is synchronized with this transmission. So full gear shift, you got to stop fully or, or double clutch. This clutch is on the left. Split braking on the right for turning brakes. That's kind of nice to have once you're used to having it. Four-wheel drive engagement right there. Coming up, ignition key switch there. The blue lever sticking out to the side is the uh, hand throttle, pretty common even on tractors today. And then for gauges, all we have is temperature, RPM, and hours. There's no fuel gauge here. Right up behind the throttle lever there is our glow plug indicator on this tractor that no longer functions. You have a button for the horn, a switch for the flashers, and the switch to turn on and off the headlights. So that's kind of it on the dash. Very, very simple controls. Loader on this tractor, you'll notice it's a two lever control. All modern tractors will have a joystick instead. In this case, the loader valve is mounted up on the loader, which is the traditional place for it, particularly on older tractors. There are some newer compact tractors that actually have it integrated into the fender right next to the, the driver's seat. Another big difference between this tractor and a newer tractor is this operator station. You can see the transmission hump is very substantial compared to the footrests. A lot of modern tractors, it's more of a step through or just a small hump. In this one, everything is right here. I mean, the transmission is essentially the frame of the tractor and it is splitting your feet when you're in the operator's seat. So, if that's a consideration, kind of having a clear path for your feet, this doesn't necessarily have that. You can see the two shift levers here. It can be a little bit of a pain. You can get your foot or your knee caught getting on and off, especially me, I'm over six feet tall. Sometimes I will catch a shift lever or something like that as I'm getting on and off the machine. 
Again, being an older machine, the controls are simple. You'll notice there's nothing underneath the seat here kind of preventing something from dropping down to the ground. Shift levers are all down low. This one is your PTO engagement. Again, that's your four wheel drive. You've got the control there to control the, the rate of speed for lowering the three point hitch. And then over there at the fender, that's your position control for the three point hitch. So it's all here, all the same controls that you would have on a modern tractor, just not necessarily as ergonomic or as user friendly as some of the high end modern tractors. The loader on this tractor is the 770 Ford loader, which fit on the 1300, the 1500, and the 1700. The big thing that I don't like about this loader, and this might even be my biggest complaint about the, the tractor, is the lift capacity on this loader. I max it out all the time. Depending on the spec you look at, it has a lift capacity at the pivot pin of 700 to 800 pounds. That's comparable to basically a subcompact tractor today rather than a, a tractor that's in this frame size. And so there's good and bad to that. The bad is you max it out and, and I'm constantly finding I wish that there was a little more lift there. The good is it's quite stable. This is a heavy machine. In its lightest configuration without the loader, this machine is over 2,600 pounds with the rear wheel weights that are on it, with the loaded rears plus the loader. This machine is up over 4,000 pounds. And so when you're working that loader, even with nothing on the three-point hitch, it's pretty stable you know, in terms of your real ballast and, and not being able to get into too many unsafe situations compared to if you had a lot stronger loader. So good and bad to that. But again, that, that's kind of one of my biggest complaints would be the, the lift capacity there. In terms of some other features here, that's the fuel tank and the fuel fill. Notice it's way down. It's actually under the hood. So we don't even have a big opening knob coming up through the hood like you see on some modern tractors. It's down below the hood. You got to open this door to get there. And then it's a kind of a small cap, more like you'd see on a radiator cap. The other door in this hood is actually to the radiator cap. And that's kind of a nice feature. You can actually get to the radiator uh, and the radiator cap without opening the whole hood. Now, the other reason that that's good is because on this machine, there's no expansion tank for the overflow on the radiator. It does vent, but no expansion tank. So basically, if you need want to check how much coolant you have, you do actually have to open that and open the radiator and take a look. Another thing that this tractor has that you don't see anymore is an oil bath air cleaner. So nowadays everything is a paper element. On this machine, it's actually an oil bath. Nice thing about that is you don't have to buy an expensive paper element air filter every time. On the other hand, you got to deal with oil and you got to clean the whole canister periodically. I use waste oil in it in terms of filtering and you know, clean it out usually on the same intervals or even more frequently than the oil change. I've opened the hood now just so we can see the engine. I said this tractor doesn't have a fuel gauge in the dash, but it does actually have this sight line on the side of the tank. And you can actually see this down to about that point with the hood closed. So at least you can see when you're getting low. Not the most convenient thing, but nonetheless not awful. This tractor, compared to a modern machine, this is a two-cylinder diesel engine rated at 25 horsepower. This particular machine is incredible on fuel in terms of fuel economy. However, this two-cylinder vibrates quite a bit more than a three-cylinder would, particularly if you're at certain RPM levels. And so that's another complaint about this tractor but otherwise this engine runs great and it's quite reliable this particular tractor has a very efficient drive line so this is rated at 25 horsepower and this tractor specs out at 23 and a quarter horsepower at the pto you're not going to find a 25 horsepower engine in a tractor today that's putting out that kind of horsepower at the pto particularly if it's a hydrostatic tractor gear drive transmissions will come a little closer but the hydros will suck away some of that engine horsepower. 
In terms of access to everything, this tractor does not disappoint in that regard. And some new tractors will configure things different. In this case, the battery's up front, fuel tank is there behind the engine. Some of the modern tractors will put the battery back there. Personally, I like it up here. If you ever need to jump the tractor, which I've had to do, or if you wanna use the tractor to jump something else, it's nice having that right up front. The oil filter is right here. Dipstick right there for your engine oil. There's your fuel filter. This tractor has one, it's right there. Those screws on the side are for bleeding the system. The uh, aluminum there is the injector pump. Everything is right here, easy to access. Here's your hydraulic pump, your hydraulic run lines running back to the transmission. The transmission is one reservoir for the hydraulics. And right there, that cap is your dipstick for checking your hydraulic oil. So all the service points are really easy to access on this tractor. That's definitely a plus that I like. So in terms of frame size and capability, to compare something new to this tractor, I think the closest comparison, a direct comparison, is probably a Kubota L2501. And in terms of a gear drive tractor, I actually think that this old Ford is probably nicer than a Kubota L2501, simply because of that 12-speed transmission versus an eight-speed transmission in that L2501 of its gear drive. You switch over to Hydrostat, it's a different ball game. You can't really compare the gear drive tractor to the hydrostatic tractor because they just have different, different purposes and different feel operating. But I would take this 12 speed over an eight speed any day. There are eight gears on this machine that I use, but they're not the eight speeds that you get with an eight speed transmission. I use the lowest of all gears for tilling. I use the highest of all gears on the road. Other than that, I use the six gears in the middle, second and third range for all of the other work that I do. And I actually do use all six of those gears in different applications. You don't get that with an eight speed transmission because your gears are gonna be farther apart and you're quite probably dealing with two ranges on that eight speed transmission. A nice upgrade is a shuttle shift so that you can go from forward to reverse on the column just by sliding a shuttle then you'd have eight speeds forward and eight reverse or 12 forward 12 reverse um, that would be nice and it would be nice to have forward to reverse synchronized but it's really not a big deal depending on what you're doing with the tractor especially once you get used to it this machine does stack up great compared to a modern machine like a Kubota L2501 there's really not anything that that new machine can do that this one doesn't do and, and do very, very well. In terms of comfort features, you step up to a more high-end compact tractor, yeah, that's gonna be much nicer than an old machine like this. In terms of the big drawbacks of an old machine like this, um, Ford was partnered with Shibara in the 1980s for making these compact tractors that New Holland basically took over Ford and New Holland has since dissolved that partnership with Shibawa. It's now they're partnered with LS out of South Korea. And so this tractor is obsolete. And many other compact tractors of this vintage are also obsolete. For example, the John Deere's of this vintage were all made by Yanmar. And so if you're buying an old tractor like this, know that it is obsolete and some parts may be hard to find or even impossible to find. That is probably the single biggest thing that is a discouragement or that I don't like about this tractor anymore is that getting that support and being able to get and find parts for it can be difficult and then some of those parts can be expensive and it's just hard to find some things. And so if you can live with it or if you're fine with kind of inventing things on your own to fix certain things that break, there's nothing wrong with an old tractor like this. The tractor you have is the cheapest tractor that you'll find, right? Because a new one is gonna be close to $30,000, something like that. So really no complaints about this machine. Like I said, there's things I like, there's things I don't like so much, but if you try and compare this, a 40-year-old compact tractor against a modern Kubota or Deer, it's really quite comparable to what's out there today. And then in some cases, there are things that this can do better, like three-point lift capacity. And then there's some things where it's lacking, like loader lift capacity. So there are trade-offs there, but overall, 
An old machine isn't necessarily a bad machine if you're willing to kind of do some of your own work, work on it, and maintain it.